God bless you, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this week's Godspeed Magazine Live. You've been reading this month's issue of Godspeed Magazine, the revival issue. You know what's happening all over the world, in Lima, Peru, in Juarez, in Tijuana, in Germany, in Lebanon, in Iran, <laughs> all over the earth. Revival is breaking out, God is having his way. Here's the thing, in America, what's happening? In Northern Georgia, something has exploded, and I can't wait for you to take a look at this montage and understand what's happening. God wants to send revival to this house. God wants to send an awakening somewhere in America. Why not Dawsonville, Georgia? Why not right here in the heart of Dawsonville? They already come to visit your malls. How about they come visit the house of God? Because the presence of God is abiding in the house. That the parking lots of this place are greater and larger than the parking lots of the outlet mall. That you got more people waiting in line than they got waiting in line at your finest steakhouse. About because if they know if they walk in the doors, their marriages are going to be healed. If they walk in the doors, their families are going to be restored. If they can get their babies through the doors, they'll get set free from the addictions in their life. During our 21 day fast, I was walking across the stage in prayer. And as I approached the baptistry, the Lord gave me a vision. Even though the baptistry was empty, there was no water in it. The Lord showed me that it was full of water. And on top of the water was a strip of fire. And the Lord spoke to my heart and he said, Todd, I am going to baptize people with water and with fire. hope that you loved that montage and in just a minute we're going to dive into the massive revival that's happening in North Georgia. Even better, it began with Christ Fellowship in Dawsonville and we have, we're honored to have with us a senior pastor, Todd Smith. And Todd, I just want to thank you for being here with us today. Jeremy, what an honor it is to be with your viewers and cannot wait to share what God's doing here at North Georgia Revival. And amen. And uh, before we dive into the, I just have to call them incredible moves of God uh, that you've been witnessing, um, we'd be honored if you'd pray over today's episode of Godspeed Magazine Live. Absolutely. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity just to be together and to share your heartbeat with people all over the world. Uh, we pray that your presence would fill every home, every room, and that you would visit us and meet with us. We pray, God, for revival to touch all of our churches, every nation. Yes, Lord. We need you, God, now more than ever. So come, yes, Holy Lord. Spirit, in power. Be great in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, guys, when we come right back from this quick commercial break, we're going to be talking about how God is so powerfully moving, and you do not want to miss this. Stay tuned. You turn on the news and it's all political warfare. It seems like the media is always raging about problems with everyone, everywhere, about everything. I love Godspeed Magazine because it's about hope. It's about God being our hope. Hope in DC. Hope for persecuted Christians. Hope for the impoverished nations. Hope for the unborn child. And hope for the least, the last, and the lost. Because they focus on God in action. And that's what I love. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. We are getting stories from all over the world that have one theme in common, and that is that God is having his way and revival is breaking out. Pastor Todd, you have a very interesting testimony. And 
from the point of view of you used to be a pastor in a denomination where the vast majority of members don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the active spiritual gifts are available for today's believers, but you have a genuine walk and something happened to change your perspective. So can you share a little bit about your background and also tell us how God opened your eyes on those issues? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. I love telling this story because there's so many people just like me. Uh, I was raised Southern Baptist, and I thank God for my heritage. I thank God for all my mentors. Absolutely. Um, and I went to seminary to be a Baptist pastor and started pastoring my first church, uh, a Baptist church. And the first three years, we were one of the fastest growing Southern Baptist churches in the state of Georgia. People were being saved left and right. Absolutely. You know, we were adding a new building program, et cetera. But in the midst of of all of that growth, I started getting hungry for God. I would start reading the scriptures and see things in there. I would see things in there that I wasn't seeing in my ministry. People being healed, life being changed, folks having devils cast out of them. And I said, Jesus, none of that is a part of my ministry. And I really went on this quest and said, God, if, if there's more than I wanted. Amen. So I started reading the Bible. And from that perspective, but I never saw that the baptism of the Holy Spirit was valid or for me or applicable until one day I took off my denominational glasses and I started to read the Bible without any denominational bias. Amen. And when I read the Bible without my prescriptions, if you will, these glasses that I paid a lot for <laughs> in my education, the scripture started opening up for me, Jeremy. And I realized that the baptism of the Holy Spirit was real, valid, and for me today. And I'll never forget that day when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in new tongues. It changed everything. Wow, praise God. Guys, I know if you're from the outside of this bubble, it seems so impossible. But trust me, if you ever are given the blessing to be put at the center of any of these stories, I've had the luxury of having God move me around to hear and see these things. And you start to know that there's a very consistent pattern of these things. Regardless, I'm not talking about religion or whatever. I'm just saying, when you see the same thing happening from people that came from a Baptist background, they came from a I don't care where it is background that just got saved. And it's always the same patterns, the slain in the spirit and these things. All of a sudden they can't move. They're laid out, just blown away. Um, and I could tell you a personal testimony about a particular oil that came from his state that did that exact same thing to me and my wife. So I'm telling you from personal experience in a lot of different ways, it's very real what he's discussing and describing. Um, so um, what's happened since that time, since all of this and, and how has God been moving? Um, I, I mean, I, I think you just mentioned uh, recently that there was a cystic fibrosis Tell us about you know what God has been doing with this. Yeah, let me let me share just a few stories, uh, but let me back up for just a moment, Jeremy, because at no point during our time of fasting did we pray for miracles or we prayed for signs and wonders. And we have to be real careful in the body of Christ that we're not chasing signs and we're going yes. after all of the things that Jesus can do for us, yes. you know, so to speak. Yes. So in our 21 day fast, there were three things that we specifically prayed for. First of all, we said, God, we're going to seek your face. We're just going to come after your face with everything within us. We're not coming after your hands. We're not coming after your goodies, your giftings, your blessings, not even your promises. We just want your heart. We just want your face. So Amen. our church would corporately come into the sanctuary, Jeremy, and pray. That's huge. And we would just seek his face. We would sit into his presence. We wouldn't yell at the devil. We wouldn't try to pull down strongholds. We just wanted him. And so we, we, we said, Jesus, we just want your face. That's all we want. And at no point did we pray for miracles and signs and wonders. The second thing that we prayed That's for, Jeremy, awesome. is that the glory of God would manifest in our building. In other words, when I read John 2 of how Jesus turned the water into wine, the Bible says that he went out and manifested his glory. I said, Jesus, whatever you did in, in John chapter 2, the turning the water into wine and how you manifested your glory, I give you complete permission to manifest your glory in this place, no matter what it looks like, no matter what, what, no matter what manifestation, come and manifest your glory. Amen. The third thing we prayed for, Jeremy, and this is dangerous, we said, God, 
We want you to press into us. Oof. We want your. We want you to press into us. We don't want silly church. We don't want goofy church. You know, feeling church. We want when we walk into the building that we feel your presence. That causes us not to fall backwards, but to fall forward on our face in repentance with brokenness and contrition. And we cried out, God, we want to respond like Isaiah and John responded, Woe is me, the man of unclean lips. Because I think, Jeremy, before we can really represent the gospel to the world in power and signs and wonders, the church has got to get right with Jesus. Come on. Amen. We have to have a call back to authentic Christianity, godliness, purity, righteousness, holiness. And I'm not talking about legalism, but I'm talking about a a hunger in your heart to honor him, to please him, to walk above reproach, to abstain from appearances of evil. And not to see how close to sin that we can get to to it, but to run from it as if in terror. So those were the three things that we prayed. And I really believe that God honored that. And so when we started that spontaneously, at the end of the service, we just saw a manifestation of power that I've never seen before. Wow. We saw one man, uh, I saw a gentleman that had the right on his body that literally met off his body in the water. Wow. The rice is just and came off in the water we, of baptism. We just kind of went, oh my goodness, something happened. Yeah, and so we just started seeing miracles like this just happen. And there's a man by the name of DK had cystic fibrosis, 18 years of age, gets into the water, he comes up out of the water, and he says, the first word in his mouth, I can breathe. Wow. And then he, in the hotel room that his chest burned for five hours. Wow. And today he's taking no medicine, no treatment for cystic fibrosis and it's completely healed. And cystic fibrosis, as you noted, was an, is an incurable disease. There's no way to come back from it. And it's the kind of thing medically that they can absolutely see or absolutely not see. It's not like they're gonna have a hard time looking into that. It's a clear and present and obvious. It is so incredible to me. So I, I wanna review that formula because I think those are the elements that I have seen personally that are so powerful you listed them one, two, three, and I'm thinking of them three, two, one a little bit, but the third one was the repentance, the full brokenness of wanting God, because that's where my walk started, right? It starts with that Acts 17, 27 kind of thing of, you know, he set up this whole thing so that we'd reach out for him. And in that moment of brokenness, we reach out and find out that he's very real and very not far off, as it says. Um, and so my thought is that, uh, we start with that brokenness, that repentant heart that says, no, I actually really want to be clean, not because people saw it, not because whatever, and I'm not going to see how close, as you said, I'm going to get to sin, but rather I'm going to flee from it. And the other two pieces, which are so powerful, you said was, um, you know, we are seeking first this love. That was your first thing was this love with God, right? God wants his children. He want like a daddy wants his babies. He wants us close to him and not looking for his stuff, but for him, for his heart, we don't want our kids saying, dad, what can you buy me next? Right? We want our dad and our kids saying, "We, I love you. And then this, the third thing, which you put in the middle, but it's it, key is that you're looking for the glory of God, for his will to be done, for him to be glorified and the outcome. And those things are very, it's amazing how consistently those things are at the heart of even the heaviest Pentecostal people I've ever met, and but all the real ones, no matter which denomination, where they came from, all the real people have those three elements, wanting to glorify God, that the primary thing is about loving God, and that the most important thing we do personally is that we repent, that we break, that we get real about this wanting to walk into his, he knows we can't fake, he can't hide anything from him. <laughs> he knows our hearts. I mean, no matter what we hope we're doing, he's just, I already know who you are, who you really are. Yeah, yeah you know, he, he said in Psalm chapter 27, he said, David, speak my faith. Come after me. Don't come after my hand. Don't come after my goodies. Don't come after my blessings. But come after me. Yeah. And that's, oh, it's so good because it's such a great thing to know that God wants to have that kind of relationship with us. Um, Are you experiencing these similar kind of results when you travel to the other churches? 
like cystic fibrosis level, massive, super, is God moving and slaying people in the spirit? Is it that same kind of thing when you travel to churches everywhere else? Yeah, there is there is something that God is doing uh, right here, right now, that is transferable. Every church that we go to, they're experiencing water. Uh, we were in Birmingham, ten little boy had dyslexia. He was blind in one eye, and he could only read one of the world and another. He was ten years old. He gets into the water comes up out of the water, goes to the top of the steps and puts his glasses back on and he says, Mom, I can't see out of his glasses. He takes his glasses off and his right eye pops open. Unbelievable. And then, within 30 days, he has already graduated from the kindergarten reading level now to almost a third grade reading level. Incredible. Completely healed of dyslexia. God is touching. Then his sister of 12 years old was stricken with arthritis when, since she was three, every day in pain. She gets baptized in that water, comes up out of the water, and has been completely pain free in 30 days. Wow. Man, as somebody, I have arthritis in my thumbs, man. I can, I can, I can only imagine what a life change that is. That's gigantic. You know, and one of the greatest miracles, one of the greatest miracles, Jeremy, is Lorraine Bars, the husband ran for governor in the state of Georgia uh, a few years ago. But she had stage four breast cancer. She had 50 cancerous lesions in her body. Stage four breast cancer. All over her, even up with it. She started oral chemo June of 27, 2018. She had taken four oral chemo, so at best, it's going to slow it down, maybe even contain it, even the doctors, the way that we can cure it. She comes and gets inside on October the 28th. She had it in schedule for October the 29th. She gets water that night, and the Lord teaches her. I'm mean, just going to it out. And the next day, she had her scan. All 50 answers from Legion had disappeared through rat case wiped off of her feet and she is completely 100 percent healed today. that is so incredible and and for what it's worth this is one of those things for those of you who are the doubting thomases <laughs> this is one of those things that may help you a bit because there's the pet scan of her prior to she's got uh you know just dots all over her body and there's the next day after this she happened to have a, a another scan scheduled and there's nothing. Every single one of them is gone. So for those of you who need proof, <laughs> God's a God of proof. You know, he's not asking you to put him to the test, but I'm telling you right now, in every direction you look, you should be seeing God. And if that's not enough, you can't look at the heavens and the skies and the stars and your children and see God already. If that's not enough proof, then we can bring you people getting healed, water and fire baptized a day later kind of thing. And I know, Todd, you've been uh, uh, keeping uh, this massive book just with all these, this log, this entry folder, massive thing. How many entries of miracles do you now have in this book? I mean, do you have any oh, idea? <laughs> I know it's a lot. Jeremy, it's just a massive, it's huge. And every day we're getting testimonies of people literally all over the world that are coming and they're encountering Jesus in the water. And, and, and we tell them, guys, it's not about the water. There's nothing magical about the water. You know, people sometimes want to take a bottle of water with them. We go, guys, it's not the water. It is Jesus himself meeting people in these waters. And, and, and Jeremy, I asked the Lord, I said, God, why, why the water? Why the water? And he spoke to my heart very clearly. And he said, Todd, I am coming with a vengeance after my bride. Mm. I'm coming with a vengeance after my bride. And then he said something that really, really messed me up. He said, Todd, my, my people have been fleeced. My people have been fleeced. And I said, oh, Lord, I said, I know pastors. I don't know anybody that's fleecing your, your, your sheep, you know, taking something from them. I don't know anybody. And he let me sit on that for a few days. And then I looked it up in 
the spa, you know, dot com, and I looked up the word police, and one of the words is cheated. Cheated. And the Lord said, that's it. He said, my people have been sitting in churches where pastors and leadership teams have made it all about comfort. They've made it all about consumer base. They've taken out the teeth of the gospel. Mm-hmm. They've made it about principles and formulas and steps to a better life. And he said, they come into the and they're sicker than they've ever been. Marriages are falling apart. They're more addicted than they've ever been. They're dying. When the chief died, he said, I'm coming back with a right, and I'm going to clean her up. We are at the beginning phase, the awakening of the awakening. All right? And, and this is not about miracles, because all miracles are temporary. All miracles are going to, you know, have a shelf life. You're going to die. But what happens in your soul and in your mind and your heart, that's eternal. Amen. And so God's going after the heart. And we go after his heart and his face. We get everything in his hands. Yes. Everything. Yes. So yes. this is just the beginning, Jeremy. This is just the beginning. Guys, and, and I just want to point this out because he's bringing, if you've been watching these Godspeed Magazine lives during this month, if you've read the revival issue of Godspeed Magazine, you know that we're talking about revival going crazy in a church built inside the nastiest prison in Tijuana, Mexico. If you know what we're talking about, you know that the government of Mexico is paying for a stadium to be filled because a revival broke out in Juarez. If you know what we're talking about, you know that the largest mission trip in the history of the world is being doubled in an entire nation is being saved in a day twice the size of anything like this has ever happened, and it's happening June 19th, right? Of this month, right now, right? Lima, Peru. If you know about this, you know a billion soul movement is about to complete its first billion soul save. If you know about this, you know Germany is launching a global outreach day that's bringing 100 million Christians together in May of 2020. If you know about this, you know that America, North Georgia, and now you just heard how many other states are coming through. This revival, this awakening is breaking out everywhere. And the reason I'm saying it, the reason we published it, the reason there's a revival issue of Godspeed Magazine right now is not because we thought it was a good idea. I definitely don't want to get into this theological argument about the revival happens this according to this and eschatology. I don't want it. But God said, are you kidding? What? Look what I'm doing. When are you going to announce that the revival is happening now? It's happening now. The fire is lit. There's dots everywhere, all over the earth. And guess how many news networks are covering it? Zero, right? And I say that as a hyperbole. Charisma News, just as an example, has covered this particular revival, right? And so there are some, and Steve Strang's a friend, so praise God for Steve Strang, the CEO of Charisma. There are some in the believer, teeny weeny little pocket that are talking about this, but the vast majority of the population of the earth doesn't know that God is absolutely moving and that the revival is absolutely in power. And I want to tell you that this doesn't have to be a, hmm, maybe he's telling the truth from your couch. It doesn't have to be, I'm thinking it over. I'll think about it. What it can be for you, directly you sitting there right this second, you individually is on August 18th through 20th, Todd is having a pastors and leaders conference. And I don't know exactly who's allowed to go, (laughs) but maybe you can get in. (laughs) Maybe there's a part for regular people. Maybe, you know, and I just want to invite anybody, if it's possible, to come and be a part of, or maybe Todd, you can tell us where can they come and be a part of this conference and tell us what's in your heart for the conference itself. Yeah, um, Jeremy, thank you for that. Our, this will be our second pastors conference, and it was just so explosive last time. Pastors went all over the country, back to their churches, baptizing people. Uh, it is August 18th, 19th, and 20th, Sunday night, Monday, and Tuesday. If you can't get there for Sunday night, get there Monday. Uh, special pastors and leaders service on Monday evening. I'm telling you, the Spirit of God has already spoken to me about this meeting. There will be such a roar, such a brokenness, such a groaning in this Pastors and Leaders Conference that I I really will shake. God is looking for contrition and openness among 
the men and women of God. Amen. I think he is uh, with Christian swag that we have on platform. <laughs> just where about, you know, uh, how well communicate am I, you know, looking at the wrong flesh and metrics. And I said, I, I'm one of the here upon all flesh. God is looking for broken men, broken men. And this right here, this path of the 18th and 18th and 20th of August will be everything that I believe that will infect you with revival virus. It will infect you with the revival virus and I promise you will be a part of the awakening, the awakening when God is going on the earth. You can go to um, our website. Uh, is it okay to hear that? Absolutely. Please, please, please. Yeah, it is cfchurch.tv. cfchurch.tv. Get all of your leaders here. People are already flying in from all over the country. There'll be hundreds of pastors there uh, coming in from all over the world. Get to the pastor's conference. Get infected with the revival virus and watch what God does in your church and community. Amen. Praise God. And who can come to that? Just in case people are saying, well, I'm not really a pastor or a leader, but can I sit in the back? Yeah, just come. Just get there, pastors and leaders. If you're a leader of a church. I got you in. Remember that. (laughs) <laughs> you know, just get here. Get here. Now we do have limited capacity, you know, uh, but sign up, make sure you're in. Um, because when it gets once it gets full that we we gotta we gotta shut the shut the registration. But it's cfchurch.tv. Cfchurch.tv. Okay. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Well, Pastor Todd, I appreciate you so much being on here with us today. I appreciate you bringing the revival into focus for everybody in America, because honestly, strangely, of all the stories God has brought us from all over the world, the last place he brought us was into our own soil here in America. And for me personally, that sort of makes me a little uneasy. Like, I I don't want to be last. I don't want us to not be participating in God. I don't want to think that our country's not waking up. And so you really, truly, for me personally, it's a gift to know our country is in fact on fire and I just happen to be stuck in California, so I haven't seen it here. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, I have seen a powerful revival through leaders here that are going to other places and the revival is going with them there. Uh, but I think I'm gonna need to come out to Georgia and, and uh, be with you guys there to see this thing firsthand. Um, and so please, our greatest gratitude, thank you so much. Uh, it's just been an honor to be with you, Jeremy, and your great people. Uh, I want to encourage people to get to Dolphinville, Georgia, the northeast part of the state. We're 50 miles northeast of Atlanta. The fire of God is falling. Revival is happening. People are falling back in love with Jesus. Yes. Authentic love with Him. And that's what it is all about. Yes. I want to encourage all the leaders and pastors to be a part of the uh, Pastors and Leaders Conference of the North Georgia Revival, August 18th, 19th, and 20th. Come be a part of that. You can register at cfchurch.tv. Space is limited, and so register as soon as you possibly can. And Jeremy, God bless you and all that you're doing for the kingdom of God. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, brother. Thank you. All right, brothers and sisters, we're going to be sharing more of these stories in Godspeed Magazine all this month. And in Godspeed Magazine Live, I ask that you share them. We're depending on you. You're the voice. You're his hands and feet. People need to know what's happening. Share the revival. I want to say God bless you. And if you bring the full gospel of Jesus Christ, Godspeed.